Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh and a very good morning and salam Ramadan. Welcome to our 10th session of webinar series Captain of Industry brought to you by Faculty of Engineering. We are initiating university industry collaboration during MCO to have a platform with our Captain of Industry to share their thoughts, way forward and challenges during post COVID-19. Now we are streaming live from Facebook Faculty of Engineering. Today, we would like to welcome Yang Berbahagia Datu Engineer Khairul Anwar Ahmad, President and CEO Iskandar Investment Berhad, with this topic today entitled Engineering and Employability. Quite interesting, right? Okay, without further ado, I would like to invite Yang Berusaha Professor Datu Engineer Dr. Muhammad Rafiq, Datu Abdul Kadir, Dean Faculty of Engineering, UTM Johor Bahru, to introduce our captain today. Over to you, Datu. Thank you, Murni. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning uh, to our speaker Datuk Khairil and also a very good morning to all of you watching this Captain of Industry webinar live through our Faculty of Engineering Facebook. First of all, I would like to say thank you so much to our presenter today despite his busy schedule can still slot an hour with us to share his experience as the leader, the captain of Iskandar Investment Berhad. Let me brief all of you a short biography of our speaker Dato Khairil has over 35 years of experience in utilities, construction, engineering, property development, credit management and investment analysis and has been involved in the development of Iskandar Malaysia for 13 years since joining IIB in 2007. His last position prior to his current position at IIB was the Managing Director CEO of Medini Iskandar Malaysia Sendirian Berhad, MIM where he remains as a director and chairman. Dato Khairil is also a board member of Sports Johor Sendiran Berhad and several joint venture companies that include partners such as UEM Sunrise, Kuwait Finance House, Raffles Education Corporation, Mitsui and Company and Sunway Group. Prior to his posting at MIM, Dato Khairil was the chief operating officer of IIB and prior to that, the Chief Executive Officer of EduCity Iskandar Malaysia Sendirian Berhad, the developer of catalytic education-related projects for Iskandar Putri. Among the institutions negotiated by Dato Khairil, which have established their presence at EduCity are Marlborough College, Newcastle University, University of Southampton, Raffles American School, University of Reading, Malaysia, Netherlands Maritime Institute of Technology, Multimedia University, and Raffles University. Dato Khairil is a professional engineer with a Bachelor of Science degree in Civil and Environmental Engineering from the University of Wisconsin Medicine, USA, and an MBA from the University of Strathclyde, Glasgow. Dato Khairil has attended an executive education program at the École Hotelier de Lausanne in February 2010 and the executive education program at Harvard Kennedy School in May 2016 as well as several executive education programs at Harvard Business School, including corporate level strategy in 2018 and strategic IQ, creating smarter corporations in 2019. Dato Khairil is a very keen rugby union enthusiast and enjoys reading and traveling and has previously volunteered for a mercy mission to Pakistan. So without further ado, I call upon Dato Khairil uh, for his uh, speech, for his presentation. Over to you, Dato. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Dato, Dr. Al Muhammad Rafi. Uh, and also, thank you very much, uh, Puan Murni Haryanti, for introducing me as, uh, uh, at the beginning. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala barakatuh. Uh, Ramadan Mubarak, and a very good morning to everyone. Thank you very much for, for, for taking time to, to join us for the, the, the talk this morning. I, I feel very honored and uh, privileged to be able to uh, share some of my experiences uh, with all of you. And I would like to thank uh, Professor Dr. Uh, Professor Dato Dr. Mamarafi once again for inviting me this morning. Um, I started my career as a young engineer on the 1st of March in 1985. So I've just covered uh, about 35 years of, of service. Um, uh, both as an engineer and as well as a corporate person. So I, I know many of you young engineers uh, are busy in your studies uh, and some of you I'm sure will be graduating later this year. But at some stage, all of you will be uh, entering the job market and looking for employment 
or perhaps may even want to start your own business. But definitely all of you will be looking to prepare your plans as you uh, leave your university and, and leave your student days and look forward to earning some income to support yourself and perhaps your families in the future. So before I go into uh, talking about uh, my topic for today, engineering and employability, uh, please permit me to share a little bit about um, what I'm doing right now. As uh, Professor Dato Dr. Uh, Muhammad Rafiq mentioned, I'm now working with Iskandar Investment Barat. I've been there for the last uh, 13 years. Uh, before that, I was working with a Singaporean uh, uh, architectural and engineering practice for three years. Uh, but I decided to join the Iskandar team in 2007 because firstly, I'm a Johorian myself. And secondly, I feel that this is a project that brings uh, progress to the nation, uh, specifically to the state of Johor, uh, where I'm born. So I was very uh, keen to be able to contribute a at least a little bit uh, towards nation building. And that's why I joined IB in uh, 2007. So uh, if I may uh, just go through some slides. Uh, our company, Iskandar Investment Barhat, uh, was established in 2006. Uh, we are a strategic developer and investment company for economic growth in Iskandar Malaysia. And our shareholders are Kazana National, the majority shareholder. And we also have two other minority shareholders, which is EPF and the state government of Johor, which is uh, KPRJ. Um, the chairman of the company is Dato Sharil. He is the managing director of Kazana National. So he's my chairman and uh, he's my boss. So I report to him. And uh, for the last 13 years, we have done uh, various projects uh, in Iskandar Malaysia. Um, and together with uh, our sister companies, uh, there are many investments that Kazana has uh, undertaken in Iskandar Malaysia, specifically in Iskandar Putri. Uh, because Iskandar Putri is where most of our lands are located. So you can see uh, on the slide, um, some of the uh, real estate projects undertaken by our group um, uh, and the companies that are involved in Iskandar Malaysia. For example, you can see Iskandar Investment there and UEM Sunrise is our sister company in Kazana. Uh, Avira is the joint venture company with uh, Singapore government, Temasek. And then you will see Educity, which is our education project. Uh, also, Iskandar Malaysia Studios, which is our creative uh, project for the creative industry. Uh, we have Legoland, uh, which is our project for leisure and wellness. And we have uh, Glen Eagles Hospital, which is our healthcare project. And at the bottom, you will see the words I2M and GBS. Um, this is an initiative by Kazana to create employment opportunities uh, in Iskandar Putri. And what we do is we invite um, companies to relocate uh, the offices, uh, especially from Singapore, uh, because uh, Iskandar Putri has a lower cost base for them, meaning to say that um, the cost of rental of office is lower, the cost of accommodation is lower, the cost of healthcare for their staff is lower. And so we try to attract as many companies as possible to establish their offices in this kind of poetry. And therefore, that will also create the employment opportunities for local Johorians and create the economic spillover and multiply effect uh, for various services uh, in, in the Johor region. So among the companies that have relocated are companies from uh, the US, uh, from Japan. And so we also have uh, DHL there. So, um, you know, this, these, are, these are some of the things that we need to do, uh, especially after the, the, the MCO is uh, uplifted, because I think uh, we are now facing uncertain times in the economy. So part of our objective as, as a subsidiary of Kazana, and also with the state government as our shareholder, is to try and stimulate the economy again, and try to introduce new projects and of course, create more employment opportunities, for example, for young engineers uh, such as yourself. So if I just go quickly through the slides, uh, this shows you Educity. Educity is a 300 acre education hub, and we have several universities that have established their presence there. 
and uh, our team uh, runs the stadium and also the student accommodation. So um, Dr. Rafik has already mentioned some of the universities uh, that are already established there. Um, we do have a, a, a good um, sports complex and we run our own student accommodation. And I'm sure there have been some of you who have been to our stadium for some of the events that we have from time to time. If not, we're happy to welcome uh, everyone from UTM who come and visit EduCity at some stage in the future. Uh, you're more than welcome and I'm sure there are some uh, uh, opportunities that we can explore together. Uh, Madini is the Central Business District of Iskandar Putri. Um, this was started by IIB in 2008. It comprises of 2,100 acres of, of uh, a fully developed uh, mixed development project. If you're familiar, this is where uh, Legoland is located and also Glen Eagles Hospital. And um, um, I think that um, many companies and developers have invested there. And uh, again, if anyone from UTM would like to visit Medini, I would be welcome to, to organize a site visit. Uh, this is Legoland. Uh, we have four uh, elements in Legoland. Uh, this park is built over 65 acres. So we have the theme park, we have the hotel, uh, we have the water park, and we have the aquarium. Unfortunately, um, the park is now closed because of the, the pandemic. So our revenue has become zero. And this is a real problem for us. Uh, how do we uh, maintain the, the, the salaries of our staff? We have 1,000 staff uh, in Legoland, theme park alone. Um, and if you include the staff in the, in the hotel and the staff in the aquarium, there are over 1,000 people who are depending on us uh, to, 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 to secure their jobs and, and to keep their families uh, in, in good position. So these are one of the real challenges uh, that, that we are facing as a group uh, with regards to um, how the pandemic is affecting us and affecting our business plans in the future. As I mentioned, the uh, I2M and GBS, uh, we facilitate uh, the entry of investors uh, and uh, foreign companies uh, through customized incentives. Uh, this is our healthcare project where we, this is a joint venture with the Singapore government, uh, Tamase, where we have um, a wellness centers called Avira and Affinity. We develop a very big studio set um, called uh, Iskandar Malaysia Studios. It was formerly called Pinewood Studios, but the contract with Pinewood has ended. So now we are branding it as Iskandar Malaysia Studios and we use this to attract uh, local and regional producers to develop movies or, or TV uh, production. Iskandar Space is something that I would like to share with all of the students in UTM. You will see that there's a UTM signage also at the bottom. Uh, Iskandar Space is our co-working space and our startup space in Affinity, located in Madini where we promote uh, entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs, and we try to help the startup community by organizing various events. And we have collaboration with various agencies, including Cradle, Ministry of Finance, uh, and MDEC, to try and help and promote uh, young startups who want to cultivate and nurture their ideas. Because uh, we are well aware that, um, you know, a lot of young people these days may not necessarily want to be employed in a company or be employed full-time with an agency. Uh, there are many young people who want to try their own online business and, and try their, uh, to, to monetize their ideas. So we create this platform uh, to promote that. And we hope that some of you can visit our, our website or our Instagram. And perhaps if you have questions and you want to uh, participate or visit us, uh, we will be happy to have you uh, at any time. Uh, we just opened again um, last week. But I think right now that the, the timing is quite limited. So you please check our website and you can see our operating hours. Virinity is uh, our VR center, which we opened last year in September. This is a joint venture with Korea Telecom, which uses the latest VR technology from Korea. And we use this as a platform for research, for entertainment, for education, and to derive solutions and applications for, for, for the community. Because at the end of the day, 
Uh, we as engineers, our, our objective is to bring solutions and to bring um, applications to humankind, to, to develop ideas and to make the world a better place and, and to do uh, things in a more efficient manner. And I think now with this pandemic and the MCO and the lockdown, engineers are even more needed to come up with even more creative solutions to solve some of the problems that we are facing today. For example, uh, the day before uh, the lockdown was announced, uh, we have uh, um, uh, um, the Prime Minister giving uh, his speech on te nation television, saying that we are going to be a lockdown for the next two weeks. So all the network engineers in the country are scrambling to make sure that all our network connectivity is in place. Even in my company, the network engineers are making sure that everybody's laptop is working properly, that everybody's connected, that our, our uh, Zoom system, our Microsoft Teams are all working, right? So, so immediately engineers have to, to come into action. And now one of the problems is travel. How do we travel? Uh, nobody wants to go into an airplane now because everybody is scared whether the air in the, in, the, in the aircraft is safe or not. So all the aircraft engineers now are also trying to find out what is the solution? How do we make the aircraft more safe? So engineers are needed all the time uh, to, 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 to help um, make life a better place for, for all of us. And even in my office now, uh, I'm now in my office. So I have to make sure that our air conditioning system as well in the office is safe and that we don't uh, circulate uh, air that is not, uh, which is unsafe. So, so we face all these questions and, 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 and the, the people are asking for solutions uh, all the time. So we as engineers, we, we have to, 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 to uh, achieve uh, the expectations of the people and, and of the community. So I think that's all for my slides. Um, I, 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 I thank you for, for um, uh, your patience in, 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 uh, in uh, viewing my slides with me. So now I would like to go uh, to my main topic, um, which is engineering and employability. Um, I was very fortunate that when I started uh, my work in 1985, I had a good mentor, a professional engineer by the name of Lee Kok Tai. Uh, so I kept my logbook and um, uh, he was uh, a good mentor for me. He guided me for almost five years as a young engineer. Um, I hope that uh, as you prepare uh, for uh, entry into the workplace, you will also uh, pursue your membership with uh, uh, Institute, uh, Institution of Engineers Malaysia and of course, uh, Lembaga Jurutera Malaysia. Uh, professional training and qualification is very important. For me, I'm now 58 years old, but every day I think that there's something new I can learn, even from my young engineers. Um, I think, uh, you know, their, their, uh, life is a, a, a lifelong journey of learning. So you must always be on the lookout for new knowledge. And sometimes you get ideas from the strangest places. So you might even meet somebody who is uh, very, very uh, poor uh, and is uh, very um, not successful in doing business. But then again, there could be lessons that you can learn. So as, as young engineers, always keep an open mind um, um, and, and always, uh, always look for, for new knowledge and new ideas. So for the rest of my, um, my session today, I'm going to share some ideas uh, with all of you. Um, um, uh, and some of my thoughts about how you can prepare uh, as you go out um, to, to, um, to the market and as you look for jobs, or maybe as some of you are looking to uh, start your own business or join your family business. Um, I've experienced uh, several recessions in my 35 year um, career. So I think I will share some of these uh, uh, thoughts with you. So, um, as you know, our, our economic statistics are, are very worrying right now. Um, our employment uh, has, unemployment has gone up to 3.9%. To 
And conversely, our GDP growth has dropped to 0.7%. And the pandemic is still there. Uh, the unseen enemy is still around us. And now we are, we are very grateful and, uh, to, to the frontliners for helping to protect us and the community. Uh, but uh, we don't know when this pandemic will finish. And we don't know actually as of today, what is the extent of the damage to the economy? And what is the full impact to all of us? We, we still don't know. For example, um, uh, we, we don't know when we can travel again. We don't know when we can have a, a Kenduri Kawin again. We don't know whether we can visit our relatives during Hari Raya. Uh, so we don't know when we will have a full meeting in the office again. We don't know when we will go and take tare with all our friends. So I think uh, a lot of uncertainty facing us. So, so, so what can I share with you? I'm reminded by our Kementerian uh, Kesehatan, Ketua Pengarah, Dato' Dr. Nor Hisham. Dia mengatakan bahawa kita perlu avoid crowded places. Dia kata kita avoid the three C's. Avoid the crowded places, avoid the confined spaces. Crowded places, maknanya we cannot go for Ramadan Bazaar. Uh, confined spaces, we cannot go to, let's say, movie theatre. And avoid close conversation, bermuka dekat-dekat. Maknanya, student-student uh, ni tak boleh pergi dating lah kan. Uh, so, so you have to be cool for a while. So, uh, I'm reminded of the three C's that we have to avoid. So, maybe I can share with you uh, my three C's that we should always remember. So the three C's that I would like to share with you for the rest of my session this morning uh, is communication, uh, critical thinking, and collaboration. So let me start with communication uh, because I conduct a lot of interviews and I meet a lot of young graduates. Uh, I also interview senior positions, but the number one thing that I look for when I meet somebody who walks through the door and comes into my meeting room is the way he or she communicates. So that, that's very important. In fact, uh, when I first started my career in 1985, I was working with, uh, I was working with the Lembaga Electric Negara. Uh, I was working with the Ibu Pejabat Lembaga Electric Negara But after two years, I was working with the Station General Electric Sultan Salahuddin Abdul Aziz di Kapa, Selangor. Uh, pada masa itu, Station General Electric itu merupakan Station General Electric yang terbesar di Malaysia yang sedang, di, uh, sedang dibina. Dan saya laporkan diri di pejabat dan my boss is Japanese. So he doesn't speak much English and I don't speak Japanese, right? So it was uh, quite a, <laughs> a surprise for me. So I have to learn how to communicate with him and he has uh, 40 engineers reporting to him. So he has to communicate with them. So, um, you know, I think uh, being able to communicate is, 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 is critical for you as you start your career out there after you leave university. So what do I mean by communicate? Um, you need to be uh, articulate. You need to be able to present your, your thoughts. Um, you need to be able to keep it simple but precise, and you need to be focused. Maknanya, cara kita berkomunikasi itu sangat penting. Uh, kita perlu uh, secara ringkas tetapi tepat. Yeah? Uh, jangan terlalu uh, how to say long-winded atau berpanjang lebar ataupun cerita mak nenek, kan? I think when you communicate, make sure that your focus is simple but it's accurate and and, and and precise. So that's the verbal part. Uh, in terms of non-verbal, your body language, you need to be, uh, you need to maintain, uh, you need to, to be, uh, look confident, uh, maintain your eye contact, because it's very important for you to be able to demonstrate your sincerity and your honesty. So your body language, cara kita bawa diri, cara kita duduk, cara kita um, uh, menghadap orang, all these are important elements uh, as, as you communicate, uh, especially for the first time, uh, especially if you're going for interview and you want to uh, make an impression. Um, and then, of course, written, written communication. Uh, you need to be able to understand how to write letters, how to write reports. 
uh, many companies have their own formula, have their own format, have their own template. So of course, there is something that you can learn uh, when you, you report for, for duty. But it means that you have to be um, um, uh, your your critical, I mean, sorry, your thought process, the way you think has to be translated into a written form uh, so that you can present your ideas um, uh, in a report or in a letter. The other thing is uh, in terms of uh, bilingual, yeah, meaning to say that um, being able to speak another language. Uh, some Malaysians are already fortunate because they can speak Bahasa Malaysia, they can speak English, and they can speak their dialect, which could be Tamil, which could be Cantonese, which could be uh, Mandarin. Um, but for example, uh, Malay students uh, normally only speak Bahasa Malaysia and also English. Adalah orang cakap, orang cakap Jawa pun ada kan, cakap Minang pun ada, tapi that's the minority. So I want to suggest to all of you, if you have the opportunity, try to acquire another language. When I did my MBA uh, in, the, in the UK uh, in 92, 93, I was very uh, envious. Um, saya tengok uh, banyak student di keliling saya cakap bahasa macam-macam. Ada yang cakap bahasa Spanyol, ada yang cakap bahasa Perancis, ada yang cakap bahasa Jerman. Uh, so so I, I feel that I only speak English. You know, but they are multilingual. They speak Italian, they speak French, uh, so they speak Belgium. I think it's something that is uh, important. If you can acquire one more language, it will be very good. It can be Arabic, it can be Japanese, uh, it can be Korean. Uh, of course, it can be Mandarin as well. So, for example, when I when I go to um, uh, meetings in Korea, some of the Koreans they don't speak English, so I have to bring a translator. When I go to China, um, uh, I have to bring uh, my staff who speak uh, Mandarin so that they can translate for me. And uh, when I go to Germany, uh, I was in Germany recently, uh, many Germans uh, speak English, so that's not a problem. But uh, having somebody uh, in my team that can speak different languages is very important for me because I deal a lot with uh, foreign companies. And uh, now any new staff that joins my company I will offer them to take another language, which the company will pay for. So I have a new uh, staff who just joined me. Uh, she studied uh, Islamic finance in uh, UIA. So now uh, she wants to learn Korean. So I have sent her to study Korean, uh, paid by the company so that she can acquire that language. Uh, so interestingly, she is also my drone pilot. So you can see that the people that I recruit are people who are multidisciplined, who can communicate, and who want to uh, understand new knowledge and try new things. Yeah. And, and talking about drones, right? Um, the other way of communication is through pictures. Uh, as you may know, our brain processes pictures 60,000 times faster than audio, than text. So, um, that's why I use a lot of drone pictures uh, and videos. For example, uh, every uh, two or three months, I have meetings with my, my boss and uh, I have meetings uh, with my board. So my reports, sometimes I use drone videos. So my, I will send my drone to take pictures, the latest pictures of my projects and our, our, our lens, and I will show this to my board. Uh, so that they can see for themselves what is happening uh, in Iskandar Putri without having to come uh, to Iskandar Putri themselves. So uh, I think uh, being able to, to use drones and being able to use uh, drone videos is a tool that I think you should also uh, learn to do. And finally, uh, I think uh, especially now with the pandemic, uh, a lot of people are working from home uh, so I think uh, it's important for all of us to learn all the platforms for virtual communication. So today we are all communicating via google.com, uh, but I'm sure some of you have also used Zoom for meetings. Uh, I use Microsoft Teams uh, for my office meetings. And, uh, you know, we can also use Skype and, and various other platforms. So I think it's very important for you to be able to, be able to acquire that, yeah? Okay, so let me move to the second C, uh, which is critical thinking. Um, critical thinking 
is is being able to 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 think and to challenge uh, whatever people are saying, right? Because um, if people say to you, you must go to uh, um, Sinai Airport uh, via uh, motorbike because that is the fastest way to avoid the traffic jam. Then you have to think, but is that the safest way? Um, is that the most convenient way? What happens if it rains? Um, what happens if, if um, you know, it's, it's uh, very slippery on the roads? So uh, critical thinking is challenging the norm. So I, I would say to you that it's important for you to be able to look at a situation, analyze the situation, identify the options, and then come up with uh, uh, an evaluation of the options, and then come up with a recommendation. So, so critical thinking to me is something that's very important. I'm sure all of you in your classes are encouraged by your professors and your lecturers to always think out of the box and to always be analyzing uh, uh, concepts that come your way. So I just want to emphasize this point to say to you that it's something that's very important, uh, something you should always be uh, uh, conscious of. Jadi, kalau kita berjumpa dengan orang dan orang memberi kita pandangan, uh, uh, saya, pendapat saya jangan kita terima bulat-bulat saya rasa adalah ada manfaat dia untuk kita beranalisa sentiasa uh, supaya kita faham apa uh, situasi yang kita menghadapi dan apakah solusi yang paling tepat dan yang paling uh, sesuai uh, dan kita patut uh, rasa tidak malu ataupun rasa uh, tidak uh, takut untuk uh, mengeluarkan hujah kita atau untuk uh, kita argue atau kita challenge tapi at the same time without being rude yeah and without creating some kind of conflict kita kita uh, maksud saya bukan untuk bergaduh atau untuk uh, um, menimbulkan uh, masalah tapi uh, what i call constructive criticism or constructive uh, comments yeah or constructive uh, suggestions so uh, in our company we are always looking for people who are confident who are able to analyze Nice uh, situations and are able to make decisions and to recommend uh, solutions. So this is uh, the second point that uh, I want to share with you uh, with regards to um, uh, the three C's. Yeah. Uh, so I have some examples. For example, um, when we developed the Edu City project, uh, we wanted to bring a few faculties. Uh, Edu City is an interesting concept. Yeah. It's not. A, It's what we call a multi-varsity concept. It's not one university with five or six faculties. It's five or six universities, each with a different faculty. So for example, uh, when we develop the studios, Pinewood Studios, we need a school of cinematic arts in order to create talent for people to work at the studios. So we need producers, we need directors, uh, we need a uh, uh, cameraman, we need uh, Uh, script writers. Uh, so uh, we wanted to have a school of cinematic arts. So Pinewood uh, recommended to us uh, the one of the best film schools is the University of Southern California, which is based in Los Angeles. And a lot of their um, students uh, go to Hollywood. So I went there to negotiate with the University of Southern California. But they told me that they cannot um, open up a, a branch campus in Malaysia because many of their lecturers are actually from industry. Many of their lecturers are actually from Hollywood. So, so the, the, the lecturer for film production is a film producer in Hollywood. So he cannot be teaching in Malaysia. So, so you have to think out of the box. Now, how do we do this? We want to learn from them. We want to take some lessons from them, uh, but they cannot come to Malaysia. So, so what's the solution? So finally, after some negotiations, uh, we decided to uh, establish a, a relationship with Multimedia University. So there's a partnership between USC and Multimedia University, where USC will train the trainers or train the professors uh, in the MMU. And USC will also develop some of the modules for the curriculum. 
and USC will also provide internship for some of the students. So that's how we have a, a, a win-win solution. And that's an example of how critical thinking is very important uh, for us to come up with solutions to real, real problems that we face. Yeah. Another example I have is um, when I went to uh, DHL uh, because I negotiated an agreement with DHL Global Innovation uh, in Germany in order for us to um, share ideas and to uh, develop uh, new concepts uh, for logistics and also to run some uh, test bed uh, ideas in Malaysia. And they shared with me their drone technology. So they have a problem in Germany there's a lot of snow in the winter. Some of the small villages are cut off uh, because the roads uh, cannot be passed through because of heavy snow. So uh, their solution now is uh, they have a little cabin uh, in, the, in the village, which is in the mountain, normally the, the village, uh, small village in the mountain. So they have a little cabin uh, up in the village and every, uh, every other day, the HL send their drone to the mountain, the drone will stop above the, the, the cabin, the roof will open, and then the drone will come down, the postman will take the parcel, and then the drone will go up, and then the cabin roof will close, and the drone goes back down to the lower level. So now they use drones to send parcels up uh, to the small villages. Uh, so it's much safer, they don't have to send somebody to drive all the way. Sometimes the village only has one small parcel, but it still needs to be delivered. So now they use drones uh, as, as the solution to that problem. And, and, and the, the third uh, example I have is uh, the, the example that I mentioned earlier. Um, I, you know, I, I used to travel quite a bit uh, because I, I do a lot of uh, trade mission. I, I meet a lot of companies and negotiate uh, agreements for them to come and invest in this kind of measure. So I travel a lot, meaning to say I fly a lot. But now I'm very scared to even go into an airplane to fly from KL to JB. Because people say that uh, aircraft uh, air conditioning system uh, is not 100% safe for virus. I'm not sure. Some people say it's safe. Some people say it's not safe. So is it really safe? I think only the, the air conditioning engineers uh, can tell us, right? Uh, so, 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 so now I think all the, the aircraft engineers in the world are probably checking all the aircraft and all the systems to make sure that uh, the circulation and the air that we breathe in aircraft is safe so that people can travel once again. Otherwise, uh, we'll, be, we'll, we'll be forever uh, staying in our own countries or maybe we go the old-fashioned way and take a boat uh, to, to, to Indonesia or take a boat to, to, uh, to Japan. I don't know. We shall see what happens in the future. So uh, I've covered two out of my three Cs, the first one being communications, the second one being critical thinking. Uh, my third and last uh, point is um, uh, collaboration. So what do I mean by collaboration? Um, when you go out, when you leave university, I I'm sure you in university you have also uh, under undergone a lot of collaboration. You collaborate with your, your classmates, you collaborate with your uh, tutors, you collaborate with your uh, professors, you collaborate with your teammates when you play sports. But when you go out to the to the working world, you collaborate even more, right? Because, for example, uh, when you join a company, you'll be part of a team. So you need to collaborate with everyone in the company, be it the legal department or the finance department or the HR department, or the marketing department, or the strategy department, or the governance department, or risk management department, or uh, the, the QA department. There are so many departments in the company that you have to collaborate with. Even if you start your own business, there are a lot of things that you need to collaborate, right? You need to collaborate with the marketing people to promote your product. You need to collaborate with the crowdfunding uh, company to help raise funds for your ideas. You need to collaborate with income tax in order to reduce any tax uh, that you have to pay. So, so life is all about collaboration. So that's very important. So again, when you when I, I come back to my original concept, how do you communicate, and and how do you uh, share your critical ideas? It's via collaboration. So, um, for example, in 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 my job as um, 
uh, investment and uh, development uh, projects. Uh, for example, recently uh, we built a McDonald's uh, in in um, in Edu City. So even McDonald's is a simple project, right? But yet again, the amount of collaboration and communication that we have to do is a lot. First, I need to get uh, um, uh, my architects to design. Uh, sorry, first I have to uh, engage with McDonald's and get them to agree to open up uh, 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 a McDonald's in Edu City. And then I have to communicate with the architects to design uh, the, the building. And then I have to communicate with my quantity surveyor to give me a costing. How much is it going to cost? And then I have to communicate with uh, Majlis Bandaraya Skandaputri so that the plans can be approved. And then I have to communicate with uh, Pejabat uh, uh, Daerah uh, untuk mendapatkan lesen, lesen perniagaan. And then I have to communicate dengan uh, Pegawai Kewangan Negeri untuk dapat uh, uh, tax punya uh, punya approval. So so uh, a lot of collaboration takes place uh, when when you are out uh, working in the real world. And, and so um, uh, the other the other example I have uh, is uh, uh, if you are you know a, a startup and you want to uh, uh, go to our Iskanda space. Uh, you need to collaborate dengan, for example, Perbadanan Usaha Sawan Negeri Johor, uh, uh, collaborate dengan uh, uh, Kementerian Belia Tenaga uh, Inovasi, uh, dan juga you have to collaborate dengan uh, people who who market your products, can, because if you have a good idea but you can't sell your idea, then that's uh, that's the end of your idea, right? So, so I I think uh, I didn't realize it's already uh, eleven forty two. Uh, so just to summarize, uh, for, for all you young engineers, uh, just try to bear in mind uh, as you prepare to go out uh, to look for uh, employment opportunities or start to start your new businesses. Uh, try to remember communication is very important. Critical thinking is also very important. And being able to collaborate and to, to, to be uh, part of uh, a bigger uh, team is also very important. But lastly, if I, if I may add, uh, uh, underlying all of this, of course, is that you must always be an engineer with integrity. Whatever you do as a young engineer must be in a transparent manner. Yeah, kita mesti uh, uh, um, menjalani tugas kita dengan ikhlas, uh, dengan uh, tahap integrasi, uh, integrity yang tinggi, dan uh, supaya um, apa yang kita sebutkan dan apa kita kerja yang kita uh, jalankan uh, uh, diterima oleh komuniti dengan rasa uh, baik, dengan rasa confident uh, dan dengan rasa uh, you know uh, um, uh, dengan dengan kita rasa bangga lah dengan kerja kita sendiri. So I, I hope that I was able to share some uh, uh, experiences and some ideas uh, with with all of you. Uh, and if I as I said, if any of you would like to visit our office or visit Edu City. Uh, please let us know and we'll be happy uh, to organize uh, any site visits. Uh, thank you once again uh, kepada uh, Dekan uh, uh, Yang Bahagia Datuk Profesor uh, uh, Dr. Rafiq uh, kerana suji menjemput saya pada pagi ini. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions uh, for, from anybody. Thank you very much. Terima kasih. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you very, very much for your good, inspiring, and awesome talk for sharing with us today. Despite of your busy schedule, you are giving your precious time with us and also your effort today. All right, now we have um, we move to our Q and A session. So we have uh, a few interesting questions to our captain today. All right, I will. All right, again from Zafira Hashim. She's one of the most active viewers. Um, from our first session of uh, webinar session, Datuk. Okay, Assalamualaikum, Datuk. Any advice to students in order to survive, especially during the pandemic, since most of the industry freeze the hiring? What do you think, Dr. Well, I think uh, the most important thing is, um, I think you have to be uh, very careful with uh, how you spend your money. Because I, when I was a young engineer, the first thing I did was to buy a new briefcase, to buy a new car, to buy a new handphone. 
and 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 to buy a new outfit to go to work. I think uh, what's most important is actually that uh, we remain humble, uh, that we uh, we make sure that we don't spend money unnecessarily. Even I, at my age, also I'm very careful now because we don't know what's in the future. Eh? And yeah. and what we see now is many companies are slowing down their business. Many companies are, are even closing down. Some companies that are so strong, uh, some big names are already starting to let go people. I have uh, I have my my sisters and my brother-in-law who are in Malaysia Airlines and they are also worried about their careers because nobody knows uh, what's going to happen with Malaysia Airlines. And itu itu satu uh, contoh saja kan banyak contoh di keliling kita. So I think as we go out, uh, we have to keep an open mind. The job could be uh, waiting for us where we don't even see it actually. So sometimes uh, it could be something that uh, we want to try online, for example. You know, we uh, you want you want to uh, be able to uh, apply to any job. Uh, it may not even be something that is related to what you studied, but it's okay. Any job you do is a learning experience. Saya pernah kerja bank semanya dua tahun saya kerja bank. Dan bila saya kerja di bank, saya dibagi uh, tugas untuk kutip utang. Yeah, uh, corporate debt. Saya dapat uh, tugas saya kutip utang 500 juta. So saya uh, engineer. Saya tak pernah buat banking kan, tapi itu tugas yang dibagi kepada saya. Jadi saya terpaksa laksanakan lah. Jadi some, I have to learn the law. Because sebagai bank, kita bukanlah guna gangster lah kan, nak kutip duit kan. Tapi kita guna lawyer untuk uh, untuk hantar surat saman atau hantar uh, untuk bawa saman di, di mahkamah. So so uh, be adventurous, be open. Uh, be willing to try anything as a young engineer. As long as it's not something illegal lah of course, right? So don't go and sell drugs or don't go and, you know, grow uh, uh, ganja plants in your house. I don't think you should do that. Uh, mm-hmm. But I think you should be, you should be adventurous and try anything uh, that, that, uh, that, uh, that comes your way. Yeah. It's so true. That, uh, indeed. It's so true that, uh, thank you. Right. Uh, thank you. Um, okay. Next from Churak Uzudin. Hello. Suggest top three languages worth learning for the future industry. Okay, um, I would say that um, you can't, whether you like it or not, uh, Donald Trump doesn't like them, but you cannot uh, run away from the fact that China is a huge economy in the, in the world, right? So I think uh, learning Mandarin is a, is a useful language in my view, my personal view. Um, I think that um, um, for those people who are interested uh, in... in um, uh, European languages, I would I would suggest Spanish because Spanish is a language that is spoken in many U- European countries, uh, in, not just in Spain but also in Italy uh, and in France uh, uh, and even to a certain extent uh, uh, in in the UK. Um, but my favorite language is is actually uh, um, French uh, because uh, I studied French uh, when I was in in primary school. Uh, so, uh, but I've forgotten most of it because I don't get a chance to practice it. Uh, but to me, the most beautiful language is Arabic, in my view, my personal view. Yeah. So, if you learn any of these languages, Spanish, Mandarin, Arabic, French, memang tak rugi lah. Pada pendapat saya lah. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think, uh, but you have to also select a language which you can also apply. Yeah? Uh, yes. Because if it's a language you learn, but you don't have the chance to practice, pun saya rasa mungkin uh, tak tak berapa the return is, is not as much lah kan uh, so you have to decide what is also relevant for you all right okay thank you dato yeah interesting mm. all right the next questions all right from chilat salam dato a part of the three soft skills that you mentioned is entrepreneurial skill is a necessity for engineering graduates uh, example, risk-taking, financial knowledge, and etc. Okay, very interesting question. Um, after I worked as an engineer for about seven, eight, nine years, I came to a point in my life where I had to decide whether I wanted to become a pure engineer, like being like a consultant or a designer, or do I want to go to corporate, corporate world, uh, meaning, meaning to go into management. So I decided that I'm more suitable to be a, a management because I like to, to, to do marketing and I like to interact with people. 
So I decided to go and do my MBA. So when I went to do my MBA, uh, I, I tried doing it part-time, but it didn't work for me. So I decided to go to the UK full-time. So I sold my car, I sold my washing machine, I sold my fridge, I pinjammed the weight. My parents bagged weight into my, my, fly, my flight ticket. So I went to do my MBA. So my advice for young engineers, at some stage in your career, after maybe at least five years, if you get the chance to do your MBA, because I believe you will learn a lot of things when you do your MBA. It's just a one year or maybe two years program, but you will learn a lot of interesting things, strategy, uh, scenario planning, HR, marketing, you know, and of course, finance and accounting. In the meantime, uh, between now and when you start work, it's important for you to have a little bit of basic understanding of uh, financial uh, fi financial uh, knowledge. Lah. At least you can read uh, uh, accounts or read a profit and loss statement or read a balance sheet. Yeah? Uh, because mm -hmm. even if you start a, a small business on your own, you need to manage your cash flow. You need to know what the banks uh, charge you in terms of uh, lending money for you to start your business. You need to, uh, to to understand at least some basic financial knowledge. I think that's very useful. So you can do that online, right? You can learn that online or you can take short courses. That's not a problem. I think that's very beneficial. And the other course, if I may uh, suggest, if you have time, is to also, uh, uh, yes, uh, um, uh, you can go online and read all these articles from, for example, Harvard, uh, uh, Harvard uh, Journal or uh, some of the business schools they publish online uh, about the latest trends in entrepreneur skills, the latest trends in terms of uh, monetizing your ideas. What are the latest trends uh, for, for people who want to start a new business? What are the new ideas? Uh, you know, so a lot of knowledge uh, out there online that, that you can find uh, if, if, you look, uh, if you look for it. So, so uh, entrepreneurship, financial skills, and the other one, if I may say, risk management. It's a, sometimes it's a boring subject, but if you want to do business, you must understand the concept of risk. What does it mean to take the risk? The higher the risk, the higher the reward. Yes. But uh, the higher the potential yes. loss as well, right? So uh, I think the concept of risk management is also something that all of us engineers uh, must understand. Okay, yeah, I do agree with the master MBA graduates. Yeah, all right. And I believe, uh, I think your, share, your sharing session today is so benefit to our students, also our staff and alumni and our community as well. All right, thank you so much for having you uh, today, Dato. I'll pass back to, uh, do you have any questions? Okay, fine. We have another question, last minute questions from Aimi Rusdi. How does... I I be prepared for a new investment post COVID nineteen. Ah, very interesting. Um, I think the most important thing for us when we do an investment is how much returns are we going to get. So how much profit are we going to uh, obtain in the future, right? Now, now as as a GLC, the profit is not necessarily just in terms of dollars and cents. The profit could be in terms of uh, the job opportunities or job creation uh, being established. So whatever that we invest, for example, we invest 10 million, we must get a return of at least 12 and a half million. Right? So uh, for example, we, we must make at least 20%. So that's 2 million. So, um, or two and a half million. So as we look uh, in the future, we have to understand what's the demand now. You know, uh, previously we used to build buildings and we rent the buildings to other companies uh, so that we can get rental income. So the rental income will help us to recover our investment and give us profit. But now we feel that there's not much demand for office space because many people are now used to working at home. So we are very worried now that if we build another building, there might not be people who uh, might want to use that building. So our money might, might be sitting there uh, and not generating any, any income. So we have to be very careful. We have to understand where the demand is. Uh, you can see that suddenly uh, logistics is a business that has gone up. We've got a lot of people are staying at home and people are ordering a lot of things online. So e-commerce is something that is, uh, is going to be uh, definitely uh, increasing. So in our partnership with DHL, we are exploring some e-commerce uh, ventures. So recently, H&M, which is a fashion company from Sweden, opened their logistics and distribution hub in 
port of Tanjung pelepas. Kalau dulu kalau you order barang daripada HM, barang tu datang daripada Europe. Sekarang barang tu datang daripada PTP. Sebab ah. dia akan ada consignment every month by ship uh, and maintain their stock dekat PTP for distribution in Southeast Asia. So logistics is a business that we think there is a demand. But the biggest business I feel that I want to explore now which we haven't done before is something we all need which is food. Right? We all need to eat food. Saya pun tengah fikir malam ni nak buka puasa makan apa saya pun tak tahu lagi kan. <laughs> Sebab ni baru pukul sebelah lebih belum pukul dua belas. So so food is something that we want to look at because Singapore is very scared now. Tiba-tiba border dah tutup, dia tak dapat makanan, dia punya sayur semua daripada Cameron Highlands kan. Yeah. So so Singapore is very concerned about food security because we can jam them, we can blackmail them and we can tell them, sorry, I'm not sending you any chickens or any fish or any eggs or any uh, vegetables. You go and find yourself, you know. So so I think as a country, they are very concerned about food security. And we as a country also, I think we are importing too much food from overseas. Masa saya kecil-kecil, kan, kita tanam sendiri semua, kan. Yes. Kita tanam pokok papaya kat belakang, tanam pokok pisang sendiri. Ini sekarang semua pisang daripada Philippines. I don't understand why. So I think uh, this is something that uh that we are looking at so coming back to the question sorry i punya punya, punya jawapan panjang lebar i think you need to understand the demand if you do something you invest in something you have to make sure you do market research you understand the consumer punya expectation you understand how much people are willing to pay for that product and you understand the marketing strategy before you invest in something yeah thank you so much dato thank you so much all right uh without further ado i would Pass back to Yang Usaha Datuk Rafiq for his last few words for today. Over to you, Datuk. Thank you, Puan. Thank you, Puan. Uh, thank you, Muni, Dato Sairia. Thank you so very much for spending some of your precious time with us. I really enjoy your talk, you know, your your tips, uh, this three tips on communication, critical thinking and collaboration. I think it's not just useful for students, it is useful for me as well. So, thank so, you. Yeah, I think uh, I want to take, I want to get your consent so that I can use these three C's, you know, whenever I teach my students. Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah, I may not uh, be able to articulate it as well as you are, but, uh, you know, uh, that three C's, uh, I think is very important for our students. And you mentioned uh, about about language just now. Uh, you mentioned yes. that, that you learn French. Uh, uh, two of my daughters also learn French. Oh, how is that? <laughs> yeah, and and uh, you know, the, during my days as undergraduate students, you know, long long time ago, they say that if you want to speak the language of love, then you speak French. <laughs> if you want to speak business, then you speak English. And if yeah. you want to swear, you speak German. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's totally interesting. And and I, I I have to agree with you that arabic is the most beautiful language arabic is the most beautiful yes. language and it is uh, it is easy to learn but very difficult to master yeah, yeah. The, the arabic so so um for your information I'm, I'm also learning arabic and, and mandarin as well but, wow, but uh, I, I don't know, excellent, I don't know excellent. Too, but, uh, it seems like you know language is not my forte uh, it seems like you know it's very difficult for me to learn language compared to some technical stuff engineering stuff is uh, you know uh, I can grasp engineering concepts very easily rather than, you know, languages. But that the different, go- side, different side of the brain. One is left side, one is right side. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right, that's right. So uh, again, uh, Dr. Khaira, thank you, thank you, thank you so very much for spending your time uh, with us. And to all of you, uh, our viewers, uh, don't forget to um, uh, what do you think, uh, 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 like, sh- like, share and comment. Yeah? Don't forget to like, share and comment our Facebook. Ah, there, there you go. Let me try and get this one. It's, uh, no, it's not going to get it. I'm not going to get it. Ah. Right. Anyway, it's on the screen. The image, like, comment and share our Facebook, Faculty of Engineering, UTM Johor Bahru. We have uh, many more uh, uh, seminars uh, for you, to, so stay tuned. Okay, back to you, Murni. Thank you, Dato. Thank you so much. Okay, and also thank you, Dr. Karel, again. And we are so enjoy your sharing session today. All right, thank you for our viewers today. It's always a pleasure for us to, for having our large number of viewers for our webinar, Captain of Industry, today. Please wait to our upcoming webinar with our next Captain of Industry and surely with interesting issue. Stay safe, stay healthy, keep your social distancing, 
Please don't forget to like, comment and share our program. Have a good day. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And see you next time. Bye.